Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question 6, 2015 um, for paper 1. So the complex number Z1 is equal to A plus BI, where I squared is minus 1, is shown in the Argan diagram below. Write down the value of A and the value of B. Okay, so A plus BI. So A is the real part, B is the imaginary part. So across to A on the real axis, so I can see A is 3. Okay, and then we went up to one on the imaginary axis. So B is one. Okay, be careful you don't write down one I or I for this um, because A and B are what we call the coefficients. They're the values. Um, and, and the I just denotes that that's the B component of the number. Okay, so it is Z1 is equal to three plus one I. Okay, the, the image of Z1 under reflection in the real axis is Z2 equal to C plus DI. Write down the value of C and the value of D. Okay, so it's a reflection. So it's like the real axis is a mirror. So if this number looks into the mirror, where is it going to be the other side? Okay, so what you do is you see how far is it from there to the whatever it's it's reflecting towards, so the real axis in this case, and I come down the same distance the other side. Okay, so that is Z2 down there. So the real part is going to stay the same. Uh, C is still going to be three, but the imaginary part changes to minus one. Okay, so Z2 then is three minus one I. Okay. Um, C, the angle theta is formed by joining Z1 to 0 plus 0i, which of course is the origin. So let's join them together. Let's try and draw it straight. Okay, um, by joining to the origin to Z2. The angle theta is formed by joining Z1. So this must be uh, theta in here. Okay, because it's the only angle that's in the diagram. So it didn't tell me to join them. So this is the only angle that's in there. That's how I know that one's theta. So find cos theta correct to one decimal place. So this is mixing trig into it. So silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America or oh hell, another hour of algebra, whichever you want, but somehow I need cos. Okay. Um, cause of the angle. Let me think about this one now for one second. Okay, so what I would do with this particular one is I would get half of the angle initially, okay, um, so that I could use right angle to trig, okay, and that's why I've written sine cause tan up here a little bit. Um, yeah, as such. So there's my angle and there's my right angle. Okay, um, and maybe I shouldn't call it th theta. Maybe it would make more sense if I called it a different letter. Let me call it X. So there's X basically, it's half of theta. Okay, so to do cos, I need adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's have a look at the lengths of my sides. So this is three on the bottom. And this height up here is one. Okay, I need to find the hypotenuse. So how do I find the hypotenuse here? Well, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So Pythagoras' theorem. Our C squared is equal to one squared plus three squared which is equal to one plus three threes are nine. So C squared is equal to 10 or C is equal to root 10. Okay, so therefore if I find cos X, I'll write it here, maybe not in red, um, cos X is equal to 
adjacent, which is here on the bottom. Let me label my sides. So that's opposite because it's opposite the angle in the question. This is hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And of course, the one at the bottom is adjacent. So my adjacent length is three over my hypotenuse, which is root 10. Okay, so that's cos x. So I'm going to find x, my angle then. Eighteen point four three five degrees. Okay, so x two x then would be equal to thirty six point eight seven degrees. Okay, and theta was equal to two x. So cos theta then in that case, I have to get cos of that angle. cos of 36.87 degrees and I'm getting 0.7999 or 0.8. Okay, so just explain here. What I did was I got the cos inverse of both sides and I got x the angle. And I got x the angle from the cos inverse of three over root 10. And why did I have to do that when the question just asked, asked for cos? Um, it was because I needed to double the angle. And, and you can't just double, I can't multiply three root 10 by two in that case, because I'm getting two cos x in that case, okay? And it's the angle that's doubled, not two cos of x, okay? Which is very different. So what I did use in right angled trig was I found when I'm calling x the angle. Okay, I could have used tan, I could have used sine, I could use any of them to find this angle here. And I'd like you for practice to try it with sine, to try it with tan. You just take different sides and see do you get the same angle for, for x, 18.435 degrees. We then need to double that angle because you can see theta is, is twice that. Um, and then you, of course, you have to go back and find cause of that particular angle in that case. Okay, was there another way of doing this? Yes, of course there was. Okay, um, let me try and show you it, if, if, if I can. Um, okay, so this was three. Sorry, now I know it's not exactly, this is one up here and this is minus one, okay? So the length of this side here is three. The length of this side here is one. So in total, this side here is two. Okay, this is theta, my angle. And we know he's root 10. I would find him the same way as before. And we could use our cosine rule. So from the log tables, your cosine rule is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a, okay? And if you need to go back and revise the trig videos, then do, okay? That's your cosine rule. So if we're gonna solve for a here, we're gonna put the side across from it here. So two squared is equal to root 10 squared plus root 10 squared minus two times root 10 by root 10 by cos of a. Okay, and when you work them out, minus this is 20 cos of A. Okay, bring these over or subtract from both sides. So you'll end up with minus 16 being equal to minus 20 cos A divide both sides by the minus 20. 
so that you end up with 16 over 20 being equal to cos A. Okay, reduce down or simplify 16 over 20. And if you can't do that in your head, just put 16 over 20 into your calculator and hit equals and you'll get four fifths is equal to cos A. And of course, if we STD that, we will get 0.8 being equal to um, cos A, which is what we got here. So you can break it up and do it in right angle trig. You've just got to be careful with the angle, or you can try it with the cosine rule as all one triangle and just solve for this angle out here, A, which I probably should have here, instead of A, have cos theta. Okay, so try it both ways. Let me know if you're struggling with it and, and I'll just do a video and I'll go slower and I'll do it again, no bother at all. Okay, then the last part of that question said, show that the modulus of Z1 by the modulus of Z2 by cos theta is equal to AC plus, plus BD. OK, now I remember back at the time this uh, and every year since this confuses um, students, OK, because it's not clear really what they're looking for. But my advice to you and my advice always is take down what they've asked you to show and fill in the pieces, OK, and see where it brings you. So the modulus for Z1, for example, do we have him? Do we have the modulus for Z1? Where are we? Z1 is 3 plus 1i. So let's get that first. Okay. So the modulus of Z1 is the modulus of 3 plus 1i, which, as you know, the modulus of x plus yi is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 10. OK, the modulus of Z2, which is 3 minus 1i, is going to be the same thing. OK, and it's it's no coincidence, guys, that we're getting the root 10, which is what we got for Pythagoras' theorem, because that's what modulus is. OK, it's the distance out from the origin, which is the hypotenuse if you form a triangle with that complex number. OK, so root 10 and root 10. So let's put these into our, our, our formula here, what they've asked us to show. So instead of um, x1 or the modulus of, of x1 there, I'm going to put in root 10 and that's multiplied by root 10 and it's multiplied by 0.8. Remember cos theta was 0.8. And they're asking us to show that that's the same as a by c. So let's go right back. What was a? It was three. What was C? It was three. So this is three by three plus, and then B by D, B by D. Okay, so we put that into a calculator, root 10 by 10 is 10 by 0.8. So I'm getting eight for the left hand side. Three threes are nine minus one. So eight is equal to eight is what we're getting for that particular question. So this makes no sense. Okay, some students struggled to see that that AC and BD was the same AC and BD in the first question. So um, yeah, if you get a question like this, just follow through with the bits and try and fill in and see where it brings you. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.